these uh, two-in-one sharpeners from steel um, is really good uh, for making very quick and easy and accurate sharpening of your chainsaw. So I have uh, one for my small chainsaw and also for the, the ripping saw that I use on my sawmill. Um, the challenge with, with this one for the, the ripping saw is that it, it, the angle is 30 or actually 31 degrees. So I want to build uh, a shim or 3D print a, a shim that makes the angle go from 30-ish um, degrees down to 10 degrees because I find it much easier if I can just like lay this down you can make really quick way of course you can just like eyeball it and then figure it out I actually use this setup here where I cut an angle um, at 10 degrees and I just put it on this um, piece of um, magnet and then just pop that on the saw but I just noticed that on my other saw when I use this the way it's intended it's just super fast so I'm gonna uh, design and 3D print some, some snap-ons that I can snap on here and see if I can make it uh, work for 10 degrees as well. It's still a little project, but fine. After many years of wanting to learn Fusion 360, with this project I finally got around to it. I'm thinking about throwing together a how to get started with Fusion based on this project. Most of the intro videos uh, for Fusion are too basic and too long-winded for my taste. If you're interested, please let me know. Anyway, I have access to a Formlab 3D printer. This is an SLA type 3D printer, meaning it doesn't melt the plastic like regular FDM printers do. Instead, it's a liquid resin that gets cured by a laser. This particular printer is not very cheap, but you can get the Chinesium version very cheap online. The benefit of these printers are that they generally produce sharper edges and sleeker surfaces with minimal visible layer lines. The downside is that they're usually uh, a bit more expensive and it's a quite much more involved process as you can see here soon. After printing, you need to wash off the resin that is not cured with isopropanol. This can be done manually or with the washer uh, as shown here. The isopropanol used here is a bit saturated, so I also had to clean the parts manually afterwards. A pro tip I received to avoid saturating the isopropanol is to dry off the platform before washing. I didn't do that here, but there's a lot of residual resin on the plate and the isopropanol gets saturated very quickly if you don't do that. After that, you can just pop off the parts and give them a quick manual rinse before it's off to curing. The curing box uses UV light and heat to cure the parts, in this case for about 40 minutes. So this is how they turned out after numerous times of printing and debugging. I'm hoping that they will pair perfectly this time, and they actually do, so that's a really great progress. So now all you have to do is to, to, um, to remove all the supports. Removing the support is a pretty quick and easy job. It's just to snap them off with a pair of pliers, and usually that's it. Sometimes you might have to give it a quick sanding, but the parts comes out pretty much flawless without any post work, just as they are. So, let's see. This one should go like this. There you go. Like this. And the other one should go like this. So I could have made the tolerances a little bit tighter. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty tight already. So what I was thinking is uh, I'd rather just glue them in place. That's what I'll do right now. 
I used some 2P10 CA glue here, hoping that would be good enough. But it turned out that it didn't hold for very long, so I had to redo the glue up using some proper epoxy. So there we go, uh, 10 degrees. That should make for some quick um, sharpening. <laughs> 